registered making bowls. So she no, had maybe no four pounds of clay. And I was making these 25 pound bowls. So she said, oh, I wish I could throw that up the clay. And I said, well, and by the way, I don't think it's important to be able to throw up. And I said, well, how much of that? She said, um, four pounds. And I said, well, put 10 pounds on the wheel to make a bowl. Oh, no, I can't do that. And I said, no, put 10 pounds on there and do it. And she did it. A lot of this is technique, not necessarily strength. I mean, I wedge up a big clay and then I cut what I think is about right, and then I weigh it and then just cut some off. <coughs> I don't try to just like get six pounds and wedge it. I wedge a bunch and then cut this. And I do that. I mean, this is going to be, um, I mean, somebody will trim this in the bottom of it. I don't think I'll be here when it's dry. Just out of curiosity, you may have already said this, but do you mix your own clays or do you use commercial clays? You said clay, not glaze, right? Clays, yes. You know, I used to mix my clay in barrels. When I moved to Montana, I bought this house that had a single car garage. I used to have live out in the country. With a, I, met, I built a big studio, and I think I had a picture of it. I mean, it was funky. I used wood, and I made my clay. I have a 300 square foot studio. There's no way for me to mix a clay. Right. So I mean, there is, but who wants to? Do it? But you know what I mean about barrel. Yeah. It's a great way to mix clay. There's a barrel. You put your ingredients in there, and you take a hoe and go like this. And you know it's mixed when it's just fluffs up like this. And then you put that in water. Everything gets wet. And then you dry it out and wedge it. It's the best way to make clay. It's lengthy. Nobody wants to do that. So I have my own clay formula. Sometimes it doesn't, depending on ingredients, I mean, it doesn't look that great in soda firing sometimes. So I might, and I have changed it since that article. That was a long time ago. But I did uh, change it. And I do some stoneware. Uh, I mean, when I travel around, I get I do stoneware. But I typically that's my range. And I also in my sculpture, I use glazes that I formulated many many years ago that are stoneware glazes. I use them at the low temperature because the surface is a little different. Did that y'all? Did that make sense? So I take some glaze that's supposed to melt at cone ten. Y'all know what that means, right? And I fire it to like two thousand degrees or less. So it doesn't melt. I mean, it, it called, it's called S-I-N-T-E-R. It centers. That means some chemical thing happens where it, it doesn't melt, but it does this chemical marriage. So it's stable. It just isn't melted. I mean, I fundamentally use three, three glazes. A white glaze, which I call my redneck, my yolica glaze. <laughs> and I use this cone 10 barium glaze at low temperature. And I use a clear glaze. But I, when I decorate, I use those under glazes. So my process is simple. I don't have to have a lot of chemicals. Now, using the, the barium at a lower temperature, are you concerned with contamination issues? Well, see, I'm not using it on anything functional. Okay. Yeah. That, it, that was what you were... Yes, yeah, yeah. No, I would never... I mean, even at cone 10... I usually use it outside on tea pots, right. but not on the inside. But should I be saying things like, you know, compact the bottom, you, you know all that stuff? No, you should definitely repeat that. Oh, should <laughs> Over and over and over. Compact the bottom. That, you know, I mean, all, we all used to use less tools. I mean, I, have, I make a lot of my tools, and I really like tools. But we all used to just do this with our hand. But, you know, as I... For functional pots, I really like that not to be kind of lucky. So this rib, boy, it changed my life. And you really need to compact that. You notice there's not a lot of water in here. So when y'all make things that are wide, keep that water out of there. I mean, even if you make a mug, it doesn't, the water should, you should get that out of there. But for wide things, and you know, don't just do this once. I mean, you really have to compact that. You don't, I don't wet it. I may re-wet re 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 this again, but I still compact. Um, and then back to that trimming thing, 
I do trim, you know, the, a foot ring. So I do trim that, that bottom outside edge, but also the foot ring. So I'll leave, you're wondering how thick this is, right? I bet this thing is going to be like more than five eighths of an inch thick. Sometimes on something like this, I mean, I'm going to flatten this one. So that size, sometimes I'll leave it three quarters. Y'all think that's a lot? But you know, you trim. No, it's good. Yeah. Uh oh. It's about an inch and a half thick. So I said three quarters. That's about an inch and a half thick. But also, I mean, when I do it, I, I think I have an image. I don't make a little wimpy foot ring. I trim so it's deep, and then I kind of flatten the foot ring so that, you know, when you trim it, it makes this kind of cylinder. Is that, y'all know what I mean? I mean, when you trim it, you've got the edge of the pot and the inside, so it's this little wall. Well, I flatten that out. So I have to have this clay. I don't want to, you can't just, you can't do that if it's windy. I, I put everything together, I trim all that long before it's leather hard, because I like to move it around. But that's unusual. I mean, most, you know, when we were in school, we, you know, let it get leather hard and trim it. That's fine, but just because of the way I work, I cringe it because I don't, I can't do it. So, and you know, the clay doesn't move much when it's leather hard. So, for those of you people who love to trim when it's really nice and wet and you just made it, there you yeah, go. Yeah, well, I don't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have some white slip? Not much. Sure. I bet it's got some. Some somewhere. If it's white and it's slip, I'll do it. Do you mind if I get some, if I get my, this clay in it? Uh, here. And just put some in a little, or oh, whenever what this gets the, the way I want it, I might mess with it. Certainly I have to flip it over to trim it, or Ian will. But I'm going to make this seat, so here goes. This is going to be underneath. And my little finger is going to fold this over. And my thumb is going to make that seat. So it's three things happening at one time. It's absolute magic. Yeah, but it has to be wet. Remember that part. It's got to be wet. So that's hollow. So see, it, it it's quite sensual there. It's not that hard edge, you know. But then, I mean, you got to have to do something. You can't look like this. You know? Uh oh. It's getting better. But I got. I have to pick it up. Uh -oh. Just like I did that much. I, see, this is round, right? So I don't want that round like that. I want it to be less, I want it to be more like this. What's, um, what am I trying to say? 
flat. I just want to make it less <laughs> nice. Less um, mechanical. Less Le nice. More organic. Thank you, Tim. Henrietta. Henrietta. Nice name. But, you know, I, I will tell you all something. We all we did mention Pete Volker. He told me one time, and I, I like to say this, but I, it's not my words, but it's true, because it's the same, I believe it. He said, you know, when you touch the clay, when you touch it, and I don't just mean that, but when you do something to it, when you do it, is important because what you do now is one effect. What you do in a couple hours is something else. When it's what we call soft leather hard or black leather hard, all those things, when you touch it or mark it, it all makes a different surface. So we have to decide, you know, what's, when do we do that? And so, like, I know this thing, I may make this start it now, but. I will refine that, and I hate to use that word, but I will refine that later. I don't mean next week, but. Being, the, being a more organic shape here, let's have a tendency to only fit on there one way. Oh, no, because what I do, so I really didn't measure. I forgot to bring my calipers. You want some calipers? I, I didn't measure, but typically what I do is measure this. And then I make, let's say I make, I'm making a dozen jars. I make all the bottoms. And then I, so this is number one. I write it on there. And then, so there's ten of them or whatever it is. And then I make the lids off the hump. So I just throw all the lids, and I number the lids. So then I've messed with it, right, after I measured it. Often, I mean, because I work when it's soft, I can pooch that back out in the gallery. It doesn't mess with that too much. God, don't ask a great question. So I can overcome that. But the lid has to fit all the way. It has to. I mean, for me. So it's kind of flattened. Squashed is more fun to say. Though. It's squashed. So, and then, you know, when you pick this up, <clears throat> than you think to make a list. So you think about, that's a lot of clay. Is it in that order because of that song? 